Hey folks, how's it going? It's Rob Davis here, and I'm standing beside Tony Davis. And funny enough, uh, Tony runs a company called Bison Pumps. You can see his logo here behind us. And a good friend of mine in Canada was telling me about how amazing Bison Pumps are. And so I've been coming to these Mother Earth news fairs now for this is my third or fourth show, I think. And uh, anyways, I ran into Tony at, what was the show we were at just? It was Asheville. Oh, Asheville, right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So anyways, I saw Bison Pumps. I'm like, oh, I got to interview this guy. But I didn't have time because I had to get to the airport. So anyways, uh, I'm going to interview Tony today. And uh, we're going to talk about Bison Pumps and what makes them so great. And uh, I think that this is such an important, appropriate technology. I mean, we, we rely so heavily on electric pumps. And um, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know that. Um, my beliefs around the electrical system and how fragile it is um, and how important water is in the design of a permaculture property. And so we're going to go through how these install into a typical uh, well system that already exists and how they play nicely with a, an electric pump. So you still get the convenience of an electric pump, but you get the benefit of having the resilience of, um, of a hand-based hand system and, uh, and how the average person can actually install one of these things entirely on their own with a few instructions. So thanks for taking the time to talk to me today. Well, I appreciate Tony. it. Thank you very much. Yeah. Awesome. My name is Tony Davis. I'm president of Bison Pumps. We make residential hand pumps. And they're specifically designed to go into wells that already have an, an electric submersible pump. So it can be in simultaneously with your electric so you have immediate emergency backup. Okay, and so where are you located? Uh, where's your company based out of? We're located in Conway, Arkansas. We have a sales office in Holton, Maine. All the manufacturing is done in our shop in Conway, Arkansas. So it's an American-made product? All We manufacture all the components in, our, in Conway, and we, made, we weld, polish, do everything in Arkansas, yes. So the origination of, of the Bison Pump was a, a snowstorm, and everyone lost power, and they had no way to get water. So this was a, an emergency setup, and it evolved into bison pumps. And the reason they would want that is it, every time, if you have an electric pump, if you lose water, or you lose power, you lose water. So with our pump, it can be in your well at the same time, and as soon as you lose power, you can go out to your well and start pumping, and you have water available immediately. One, some of the, we have a, a list that we call our 20 questions because we have to figure out how to get our pump into the same space as in, in, which is the casing with the electric submersible pump. So what we have to know is your outside and inside diameter so we need a physical space and some of the things that we have to consider is do you have a pitless adapter and where is that located how large is it. Do you have other obstructions down the well? Do you have a liner? Uh, one of the things that we do is we replace your well cap. So our pump is welded to a stainless steel well cap. Therefore, we have to know all of the specifics of your well cap. Do you have wires coming out? Do you have a submersible connection coming out? What's the diameter? What size is it? All of those factors we have to know because we replace yours with ours so that we can create an airtight seal and, and attach our new stainless steel well cap to your well. So those are uh, the other important things are your static water level, which is the ground, this is from the ground to your water surface. That dictates how much pipe and rod you need to reach the water surface. That also dictates price, that dictates how large the cylinders are, and, that, and the cylinder size dictates the output flow per stroke so all of these factors are important whenever we're talking with you and trying to size your, your pump. We have to know a lot of factors in order to get it sized right so that you will have uh, light pumping pressure and, and get that water output that you need. That feature. Yeah, so a lot of people ask, well, how does, how does the pump handle freezing weather? So uh, the pumps, whenever you're pumping, of course, it comes up the pipe and out the spout. And so all that water is there and subject to freezing. So what, what we do is we go to the first PVC section that's connected to the well cap, and we go to your frost line. In the area where we are now, it's around three to four feet. So 
So you go to four feet and you put in an eighth inch diameter weep hole, then the water will drain down to that point, and then the water stays primed from the bottom of the well to that weep hole, and since it's below the frost line, then you don't have any freezing. So that allows the pumps to be outside, even in freezing weather. This is our standard deep well pump. And when we say deep well, that's when your static water level is from the distance from the ground to the water is greater than 25 feet. That, that means that you have to put a pump down into the water and then pump it and lift the water up. This is the standard pump head with our most common well adapter. So this is the, the filter and these are the bolts to tighten the bottom plate, your electric wire access. These are the set screws to tighten against your casing. This is the bottom plate that compresses your gasket. This is simulating the end of the pump where the first piece of PVC pipe would be attached. And this is the where you tie your safety rope so you can uh, retrieve anything that you might happen to drop down in the, in the well. And it's, all, and it's all stainless steel. All, of, all of the metal on our pumps are stainless steel all the way down. Uh, we, we have this is your uh, your Delrin guide. Whenever you tighten this, when we were talking earlier about pressurizing, whenever you compress this, then you're compressing a cup seal inside, and that keeps the water from coming out. This is the hose bib that we were talking about earlier. You can see it's on there. All your standard hose bib comes with a pail hook. One of the, one of the things that that we, that we like everyone to know is how easy these are to install. My wife and I, who she's, you can see her in the distance there, we can install a nine, nine length, like a 80, 90 foot uh, static water level pump system, just the two of us. All you have to do, you start, you start with the cylinder, screw on the first section of pipe, lower it in, and uh, you just continue that process and just screwing them together and that's all that's involved when you get to the bottom screw this one on uh, okay so so what we're trying to demonstrate here is that our pump coexists in a well casing with an electric pump this simulates your pitless adapter this would be your wires for your electric coming out and our pump is offset to the side so the pump can go down the opposite side and then it goes down into the, into this water but it, unlike the submersibles, which are typically at the bottom of the well, ours, we only go about 20 feet below static water level to allow for fluctuations in your water table. And then we start lifting water from there. Awesome. A lot of customers ask us if they can pressurize their, their pressure tanks in their system using our pumps. All of our pumps, the end of the spout has a standard hose bib connection. So, we, we sell this, this component along with the food grade hose. And what you do is you connect this to the end of the spout. It's a check valve, has a pressure gauge. You connect the other end directly to your pressure tank and you can pressure it up to about the 40 or 50 PSI directly from the pump to the pressure tank. And then your entire house system will be charged. And then you could go turn on the sink, flush the toilet, that type of thing. It also is uh, required if you needed to pump up hills. Some, some folks want to pump up into a tank. So to do that, you have to have something to prevent the water that coming back. And so this is a check valve that would prevent that. All of them are, are sealed, and that's what the, the top gland nut is. That, that seals, it's a closed system, and that allows us to build up pressure. And uh, the pumps are tested at 100 PSI. So that's what they hold. So, which you don't, you know, hopefully we don't ever get there whenever you're pressuring up. So, uh, all of our pumps are capable of pressurizing tanks and pumping uphill. Okay, so we talked earlier, those were our deep wells, and a shallow well is whenever you have a static water level that's 25 feet or less. Remember, that's the distance from the ground to the water surface. And that's what this pump is it's a suction pump. So, instead of being dropped down into the water, it actually draws water up. Physics keeps us from going very deep, and we recommend not going more than 25 feet vertically, but we can go up to 300 feet horizontally. What that does for you, it gives you multiple water sources. Our deep well pump is for a well. This one can be a, attached to a well if, if the water, static water level is 25 feet or less, 
but you could also attach it to a rainwater collection system, uh, a local pond, creek, anything uh, that has good water that's within 300 feet proximity of where you want to place it. But keep in mind that the 25 feet starts at the bottom of the pump, so if you're sitting on a three foot countertop, there's three feet, so you gotta remember that. The other thing is the pump is above ground. Our others, we talked about how we could have frost free outside and drain down. Since this is above ground, that's not possible. So it's subject to freezing. And so normally we recommend people have it in a place that won't freeze. Uh, you get still about 19 ounces to the stroke, so that's still a little less than seven strokes to the gallon. Uh, it has the same uh, pump system, the piston system that we looked at. They're, they're the same type of material. Uh, it's all stainless steel. The inside, it can pressurize a system. A lot of folks have these in their basement so that they can connect them straight to their pressure system uh, because they're, they're short height. A lot of folks, if they have a rain collection system, they like to put them near their sink, which is how we're showing them here. That way they can have the water directly in the house. They don't have to go out and pump it and carry it in. It's really convenient for them. We have the flange on it. It's cut with a, a flat on one side so that it can be scooted up next to your sink if that's how you'd like to have it. Uh, they're all manufactured in Conway, Arkansas. Therefore, we put a lifetime warranty on all the manufactured parts. And it's all stainless steel. All the metal stainless steel. Uh, this one also has the hose bib and, and the, uh, the pail hook. It's easy to do any kind of maintenance. You have four screws on top. You loosen those screws, pull the whole system out, and it's all looking at you right there. You can do all your, any maintenance that you would have at that point. So thanks so much, Tony, for uh, taking the time to chat with me today. Well, thank you very much. I, I enjoyed it. I, I really enjoy being able to explain our pumps to other people who really appreciate the importance of water and, and the, like you mentioned before, the fragility of the electrical system and anything we can do to help in that area, we're, we're glad right to help. Okay. How have you found the Mother Earth News Fairs? You've probably met a ton of great people, hey? We have. We started these just last year, and we've continued to add new shows. Actually, we're in Maryland now, and this is our first time here. We didn't do that last year, and so we keep growing the shows. It's All the people here are ruined. They're really so nice, and the others are, they all are of the same mind. And it's really nice to, to have that camaraderie and, and, and the enthusiasm for the water and, and all, all the efforts that we're going through. Yeah, totally. So I highly recommend you guys come to one of these Mother Earth News Fairs. Hopefully buy some pumps is at one of them in the future. There's a ton of other great vendors here that are selling products that what I, I would classify as appropriate technology. And so you can learn an enormous amount in a really small period of time. I'm going to make sure that Bison Pumps URL is in the show notes below. So if you want to get in touch with Tony, you're going to have a way to do that. And if you have any questions or comments about Bison Pumps, uh, put them in the comments below. And I'm sure Tony will be checking those comments out from time to time as I'm going to be sending him the video. So hopefully you found this video useful. Give me a thumbs up if you got some value out of the content. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Great. Thank you very much. Awesome. Yeah, no worries.